Hey guys, today we are reviewing the hardware features and specifications of a PTZ or pan, tilt and zoom security camera by a company called Vicky Lin. Right off the bat, it has a 20 times optical zoom lens which grabbed my attention right away. To tack onto that, it offers 4K video and features a microphone and an outstanding night vision range of 100 meters. That's over 300 feet. This camera features some pretty cool specifications. At just over $300 US, this camera comes in at less than half the price of the bigger brands with similar features. Here's what's on tap for today. We're gonna to start off by showing you quickly what's in the box, and then we're going to review the camera's parts and specifications. In order to give a better appreciation for this camera, I'm going to create additional detailed videos on various topics, such as installing the camera in various locations, accessing the camera on my network, reviewing the daytime and nighttime footage, reviewing the auto tracking feature, connecting the camera to Blue Iris and to the Hikvision NVR. I can do this because the camera supports ONVIF, and will work without any restrictions to its own interface. Today though is just about the physical specs and the unboxing. Let's kick things off by checking out what's in the box. We have some screws for mounting the camera onto a wall, a weather sealing coupler to protect the RJ45 connection from the elements, a wall mount it's aluminum and quite salt and obviously it won't rust. This is attached to the wall to hold the mount and camera in place. There are little cutouts on the side and at the bottom to allow the wires to exit the mount if you're not feeding them through a hole in the wall. I misplaced my user manual, but it can be downloaded. Check out the description for that. It's a generic manual for all of their cameras, easy to understand and follow, which is awesome. And here we have the camera itself. It has a very nice weight to it. The shell and dome are aluminum and wow, it actually sounds and feels like a professional grade camera. The side coverings here for the tilt swivel are plastic, very solid, not worried about them breaking. They're not going anywhere. I believe the camera is about 2.3 kilos or just over five pounds. Now we're gonna dive into the specs and see what this device offers. Here on top of the camera, this is where the mount attaches to the bracket. Here's a time lapse of how this camera can be mounted. This is a basic install and I'll show a few more options in the future in an upcoming video. Let's now chat about these two leads. One of them is a 12 volt power connection, but as you saw, there was no adapter included. But this is okay, totally expected, since the easiest way to power this camera is through my ethernet cable using PoE or power over ethernet. This is where your PoE switch or NVR supplies power to the camera over the network cable. The camera actually uses PoE Plus, which is for higher wattage devices up to 30 watts. To know if your PoE switch works with this camera, look for the standard called 802.3AT in your switch's specifications. If you're looking for a switch, check out the links in my description and I'll recommend a good PoE Plus switch. Next, we're going to have a look at what the dome abilities are for pan and tilt. The dome spins 360 degrees, so there's obviously no blind spot as it spins continuously. The tilt range is from zero to 90 degrees, which allows you to see straight out and directly down and everywhere in between. Actually looking at this picture here, it looks like the camera allows us to see above its zero degree horizon into the negatives, which is pretty cool. On the back of the dome, you may have noticed a little door. I'm going to show you what's inside. Here's a quick time lapse of opening it up. Interesting, right? There's nothing there. But if I were to guess, I would say this is for some other hardware for another model of camera, like maybe an SD card slot or some hardware for a Wi-Fi. There's some additional screw holes in here, so who knows what this could hold. On that same note, there is no memory card slot present on this camera. The footage is meant to be stored outside of the device, and since I want to record continuously, that would fill up a memory card pretty quick at 4K. I'm glad the manufacturer didn't invest in installing the hardware for card recording, which helps keep the price at a reasonable level, and it's a feature that I wouldn't use anyways, since the camera produces so much data. Now to record footage, you do have a few basic options. 
You could use the security camera management software called Blue Iris, like I do, and that allows me to record and play back my footage. I'll add a trial link in the description if you want to give that a shot. I'll show you how to set that up in a future video if you want more details. You could also use a network video recorder or NVR. This camera supports the Hikvision protocol and can easily be connected to their NVRs to record and play back your footage. It's just plug and play. The last option would be to record and play back footage through their mobile app. The footage would take up a lot of space. However, it's good for short clips. Turning the camera around, up here you're going to find an environment lighting sensor so the camera knows when to switch between daytime color and nighttime black and white modes. If this camera is installed outside near a light source, this light source, if it's too bright, may keep the camera from switching into nighttime mode. And if the lens is even pointed into a dark area, it's going to stay in daytime mode. This is not a deal breaker for me, but just keep that in mind when you're choosing your install location. So let's look at an example. If the camera is installed here in the upper right hand corner and of course it's nighttime out and the light over my front door is actually shining on the environment lighting sensor keeping the camera in daytime mode. When the light is turned off the camera's IR lights turn on and the camera switches mode into nighttime. Even if the lens is pointed into a dark area of my yard that light is going to dictate the daytime and nighttime modes. Now here on the other side of the base, we have this little hole. I thought this was the mic, but the mic is actually internal. It seems like this is an alignment hole for when the hardware on the inside is installed. Now, speaking of mic, let's give that a quick test. This is what mic quality is like when we're 20 feet away. So right here, just below the lens, we have this little plastic pop out. Um, I'm not sure what this is used for. This seems to be no use for this camera. Maybe it's for another model. Surrounding the camera's lens, we have eight IR night vision lights. They say the range on this is 100 meters or 328 feet, which is pretty impressive. We're going to have some fun with that in a future video, testing that out. But here's a quick teaser on that upcoming video. One thing that I would like to note though, is that the IR lights are static and they do not change their intensity when zooming in. The lights have both spot and flood lenses for coverage of both zoom and wide angle situations. So let's talk about that 20 times optical zoom lens. It has a range of 94 millimeters at its widest all the way up to 4.7 millimeters. That translates into a viewing angle of 64 degrees to 2.9 degrees. So keep this in mind when selecting your camera's install location. 64 degrees is not very wide in a tight location. Here's a comparison of the ring doorbell which has 160 degrees and this camera here at its widest at 64. However, now these two cameras have two different purposes altogether. This is a zoom camera suitable for open spaces like parking lots, farms, acreages, warehouses, businesses, anywhere where you have a lot of space and also the need to zoom in to capture details at a distance. Here is another comparison of this camera installed in the same location as one of my Reolink 4mm lens cameras. This Reolink camera has a viewing angle of 87.5 degrees and then you can see how it compares to this zoom camera at its widest. My last comment on this lens is about its focus. There's glass inside that slides back and forth for when you're zooming in and out in order to keep the image in focus. I reviewed an $800 Hikvision Speed Dome a couple of years ago and it didn't do that well in low light. So fingers crossed that this one performs better. The last topic we haven't touched on yet is the camera's sensor. It has a 1 over 2.8 inch 8 megapixel Sony CMOS sensor. That's a 4K sensor and it can record and display video at 20 frames per second. So that's a ton of data. It's like 100 gigs of data per day when continuously recording using the H264 compression. All right guys, that wraps up the physical specs for this pretty impressive camera today. While I do my summary, here is some time lapse of the footage taken from this camera. I'm very happy with the specs for what you get and the price also puts a smile on my face. I'm already in the process of testing the software features like the tracking, footage, and a bunch of other things, the night vision. So you're not going to want to miss out on those upcoming videos. We'll see if the specs can live up to their name. Don't forget that links for the camera, Blue Iris, the PoE switch, and everything I use in my setup can be found in the description below. 
If you found this video helpful, do support the channel by hitting that like button and even subscribing so you don't miss a beat on my upcoming videos on home tech DIY projects that you can do yourself. Thanks for watching.